In Dallas ISD, we're celebrating Asian American Pacific Islanders Heritage Month. We visited Cotto Mills High School in Cotto Mills, Texas, where we got to chat with the percussion director and witness an acoustic musical performance. Hi, I am Sawi Leong Elino Toafa, and I am a father. I'm also a percussion director, um, I'm a mentor, I'm also proud to be a Pacific Islander. I am from American Samoa, uh, which is a U.S. territory. Is located about six hours of flight away from Hawaii, southwest. Um, I grew up there, I spent 21 years there. Both of my parents are Samoan, so, and that is one of the Pacific Island uh, nations. It's my time on the island. I mean, every, everything's just so, um, so just chill. Everything, everybody moves at their own pace. Um, no one's in a hurry to get anywhere. Um, nothing ever starts on time. Um, so that's something that I had to overcome with over, being over here, um, which is fine. I've been great at, at making sure that it doesn't happen. Um, but um, just my time on the island, just seeing everything, uh, just how beautiful everything is over there, um, just makes me appreciate it more being here where everything's kind of flat. Um, but I, I, don't get me wrong, I love my life here in Texas. You know, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I wouldn't choose any other state. I don't mean to be biased, but I mean, I, I love Texas. Um, but my, in my music, and a lot of people, a lot of the people that listen to my music, um, I always have like an, an, an island kind of feel to it, um, something that's really laid back. Um, but yeah, that's where it just comes from my life there. There's no way to explain it. Uh, it would take me 21 years, because that's how long I spent on the island, to explain it. What are some cultural customs and traditions that you feel are important to you? Back home, we take a, a culture class, kind of like how people here in Texas take a Texas class, um, a U.S. Texas government and a U.S. Texas history class. In American Samoa, we take a Samoan culture class and a Samoan language class. And everybody's required to take it regardless of your ethnicity. Um, and so a lot of those values, is, we are founded on respect. And it's a different level of respect because we, we are taught to treat everybody as if they're kings, regardless of stature. Everybody's treated, should be treated the same. Um, and to always uh, be humble, um, to walk with humility. And th those are two of the main, main, main cultural values that I take with me everywhere, um, is um, respect and just treating, treating everybody fairly. Um, but yeah, ultimately growing me on, on, on the island, everybody knew everybody. So, I mean, the way you behaved, I mean, everybody knew what was going on. I mean, you act a fool here. Well, the person on the other side of the island is gonna know who you are. So your reputation always preceded you. That's why we always try to treat everybody with this respect and to be humble. That way, you know, by the time word gets out, you're seen high on the totem pole because you've been so humble. How have these experiences guided you into who you have become today? Ultimately, it's like just just talking to people like they're people. That's that's the main thing. Um, refrain from being so condescending um, with the tone of voice and just things like that. I think a lot of people gravitate and gravitate towards me because I don't treat them like um, like they're lesser than me. I don't. Um, I try to treat them with respect and um, try to be humble as much as possible. Um, I think that is a huge part of, you know, that has shaped the way that I teach as well. That I try to talk to the students as if they're people. Without the students, I am not a percussion director. I have no one to direct. So just maintain a balance of professionalism, but at the same time, treating the students as if they're people, not necessarily like numbers. So that has really guided my my philosophy and my approach to teaching. 
How would you describe the entertainment and arts as a Pacific Islander? On the day, because at times I feel like we're, we're underrepresented, um, and then at times I feel like we are misappropriated. Um, I, um, the, a big issue is like our tattoo designs. That is a huge thing because in our culture, um, our designs are sacred to us, they tell a story. Um, our, our tattoo designs tell a, uh, our genealogy. And I know that when, when Disney came out with uh, Moana, I think about all the tattoos that you know, Maui was talking about, but there is some truth to that because our tattoos tell a story. Um, my shorter piece that I have is something that my brother created for me, but it has all the, 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 the depictions, like you cannot tell just by looking at it, but when a Pacific Islander who understands what the, the symbols mean can see it, it represents uh, my mom's tattoo that she has from her waist down, and it's called a pea. And my dad, I have pieces of my dad's from his waist all the way to his knees. I have pieces from that on my shoulder. But it's a representation. It's so sacred to me because it's a representation. Knowing that I was going to be teaching in Texas and not ha not going to go back, you know, and I was going to raise a family here, I knew that I wanted to carry my family with me. And one of the ways that we do it is we have our um, we have our tattoos that we have, and it's just it's kind of strange seeing other um, people using our artwork without knowing the meaning. So it depends on the day. In that, re in that respect, I feel like we're underrepresented and we're being uh, misappropriated. But at the same time, I do appreciate people um, loving our artwork and loving our culture, loving our dances and loving our food. One of the ones that my, I, my wife, uh, she'll make, every, make for me every now and then is Pani Popo. Um, basically, it's a roll um, kind of saturated in uh, coconut milk. Um, so there's foods like that, and then um, also we have panikeke, which is pretty much pancake batter, and it's you scoop it in a spoon and you dip it in a big old thing of hot oil, and it cooks it in a circle. So it's not a flat pancake; it's a ball pancake, um, and so the outside gets crusty and the inside is soft. Um, and but yeah, things like that is uh, um, there's that food. And the dances that we have, I've seen this every now and then, like, like even in the, in the African culture, we do like a money dance. So it's called a, a tawalunga, um, and pretty much uh, the, a female like dances, and, uh, or a group dances, a group of people dance, and they pretty much throw, put money on them, and they throw money at their feet um, as, as, as a cause of a donating or charity to that group or the family of whoever they're celebrating. But things like that is like, I know a lot of people when they see that, they like, what is going on? But yeah, so there's a dollar dance and there's also our food, panikeke and um, panipopo. Those are the two big ones that I love and I love to share about. Are there any specific customs that you would like for us to better understand? We speak with our eyebrows. So that we'll talk with our eyebrows, head nods, um, and it's not that we're trying to flirt with you or anything, that's just how we speak. So when we say yes, we say yeah. We say yes. And it's no disrespect that I want everybody to understand, when you meet a Pacific Islander, we just, we speak with our face. Uh, there's no way to explain it. Um, I believe about whether they're raised here or on the island, it does not matter where. They're gonna see their parents or their, their loved ones or their friends who are Polynesian speak with their eyebrows and just don't think any, anything of it. They're trying not to, they're not trying to make any advances. They're just, that's just the way we, we talk. As we, we talk with our, our head and eyebrows. And um, another thing I, want, I would like people to understand is that when you see the word um, Samoa, to pronounce it properly, Samoa. And a lot of people will say Samoa, and you'll hear that on TV when they're, or they're trying to like having trivial, trivial questions that talk about American Samoa, they always say Samoa. I would, I would humbly ask, it's cringe-worthy every time I hear it. I would like everybody to know that it's Samoa, American Samoa. Um, and it's important because Sa means sacred, Moa means center, 
So sacred center is what the word means. And to us, our island is sacred, our land is sacred. So customs like that, I think is written for, I would like, like people to, to say it properly more, Psalm more. So there's a song that we use to teach people our language, okay? Just simple words. Savanlivanli means go for a walk. Tau tala tala means too much talk. Alofa ya te oi means I love you. Take it easy, fai fai le mu. Taine aulele means pretty girl. Ta amilo milo means around the world. Whisper to me is musu musu mai. Oyo means my oh my. I, w I would think my best advice is to hold all of your preconceived notions of what you think a race or an ethnic group is about. Gain understanding because without understanding, you will be speaking and you'll be developing ideas from a place of ignorance. So try to gain understanding and spend time to understand. Because if we do not do that, we will continue this, the cycle of, of hate that we see now. So my, my advice to anybody who's growing up and in such a diverse place, gain understanding. Gain perspective first before creating your own judgments on any ethnic group or any, any, anyone in general. That is my, my advice to anybody. Thanks for joining us for this interview spotlight. Let's continue to celebrate Asian American Pacific Islanders Heritage Month here in Dallas ISD.